We are back with another video of working on the Nissan Gloria. If you guys didn't know, I bought this luxury VIP JDM sedan and it was already rear-ended. So I decided to take on a big project and fix it. In the last two videos, we drilled out all the spot welds and removed all of the damage. Now I do, however, still need to drill out all the spot welds on the parts half cut. And then we can begin aligning all the new parts to the chassis and make sure everything lines up correctly. But we are also on a massive time crunch because Omar's neighbors called and complained and then eventually the county sent Omar a letter saying that he has too many cars. And <sighs> So now all the projects gotta get wrapped up really soon. Here's the half cut. And we left off with drilling out the spot welds to remove the rear clip, at least the panels that we need. So we need to finish what we started here. Most of it's already done, but I still need to take off this quarter panel. Luckily I already did this quarter panel and that wheel well. And then we need to flip the car back down and then do the rest of the stuff on top. Shouldn't be too bad. Luckily we were blessed with a beautiful day in late October. That's very unlike the Midwest. Some years it's snowing by this time, so you never know what you're gonna get here. Let's begin with taking off the rest of this quarter panel on the driver's side. Which means I also need to take off this bumper bracket that I forgot to do. And then we'll grind off this adhesive to expose the rest of the spot welds there. And the bottom of the quarter panel as well. We've already located the spot welds and drilled pilot divots in this piece of the quarter panel. A lot of you guys have suggested I use a punch or a spring loaded center punch. I have used it before, but if the drill bit is not perfectly level, it will walk around. It probably would work really well on this seam because it's nice and flat. But some of them aren't always the flattest. So if it's on a slight curve, like that's a perfect example right there, the bit will walk off and it will chip the tooth instantly. This is just the method that I found works best for me. It does take a little bit longer to do it this way. I also need to unroll this quarter panel to expose the rest of the spot welt here. But since this side of the car was T-boned, I'm not gonna take off the entire quarter panel. I might just make a cut from here down. I'm just trying to think ahead here because I still don't have my new OEM quarter panel shipped over from Japan. Although it isn't shipping right now, but that takes forever. So I can use this rear end as a jig to make sure that the floorboard is in line. Because I'm sure once we start aligning the trunk and rear frame rails to the car, there's gonna be a lot of play. So that'll be one more piece to verify that it's in the correct spot. Well, since this quarter panel is already toast, I guess I can do the most cringiest thing ever. Unrolling a quarter panel with channel locks. This side of the quarter panel is now pretty freed up, at least enough for now. But I forgot to drill out the spot wells on the top before I tip this whole half cut forward. So we're gonna have to finish drilling them out all along here. And then also on the top here as well. It's pretty interesting to see the rust line along this brazing area here. A lot of you guys mentioned in the last video that this was not MIG welded, but brazed from the factory so that it has less heat and doesn't warp the panels. So we're gonna have to make a cut there as well, but I think I'm gonna drill out the spot welds first since I have the tool already up here. Now it's just a matter of prying back the quarter panel, making sure everything is nice and free. So far it looks pretty good. Actually, I think there's something that attaches to the gas door on the inside. I do need to verify that still, but I also need to break all these seams loose. It's so tight over here. So inside the driver's side quarter panel, we have the gas door actuator. Cause it's electronically controlled. There's not a cable that pulls this door open pretty fancy for it being a 91. Well, actually my car is a 91. I'm not sure what year this half cut is, but either way, early 90s, that's pretty fancy. Unplugged, and then looks like there's just two 10 millimeter nuts. That one's already loose, okay. 
this fuel door doesn't have all the stickers that mine does. I wonder what this says. All right, I guess we didn't need that open. Well, let's start peeling her back. There's so much seam sealer in here. What are we catching? Oh, do we have a harness attaching? No? Might just be wedged in here. I bet this is holding it in. This is the three layer spot weld area. Luckily all the spot welds are out, but it's like a sandwich and the quarter panel's in the middle. Yes. Another piece, but not to the puzzle. This is basically gonna be a jig in case my quarter panel does not come in in time when it's time to weld up the car. Luckily this area is straight enough to line up the bottom of the floorboard, the tail light section, the C pillar, and the wheel arch, which is all the main major pieces. Now we can finally start prying back some more stuff here. So I already drilled out the spot welds along the wheel well here, and these attach to the floorboard, which we are still trying to get off. I'm pretty sure I have all the spot welds drilled out on the bottom of the car. So honestly, I can tip this down and start working on the inside. Yeah, because the rest of them are going to be right here. I'm going to have to grind off that adhesive and locate them. Oh, look, another box. What is this one? A lot of you guys got back to me with some information pretty quick on the last side. In the last video, I asked what this box was. And some of you guys looked up the part number on here and got back to me in the comments and mentioned that it's a Hikus box. So this is the control unit that controls the power steering for the rear subframe. And this is the pump right here. And I was also curious about this throttle cable looking thing towards the rear. And the cable goes out around here. And someone said that this was a Nismo option exhaust. Pretty crazy, but obviously we didn't get the exhaust. We only have the throttle cable piece. I forgot to take off the harness on the rear clip here but I just realized this is so neat. It's actually detachable. There's only two plugs here and that's the whole rear clip harness, tail lights, trunk latch, and whatever relays and modules are over there as well. Now we gotta remove the sound deadening. Right here, this is where the fuel tank goes. And we already got the spot wheels in the bottom for the seam that goes all the way across. You can kind of see it right there. But that subframe brace, as we have found out previously, is not able to be removed with this panel. So we need to remove the sound deadening from here to get access to those spot welds, as well as these two. And wow, look at this. This looks like a ground for a sub. I don't know why you would use self tappers when there's threaded holes all over this trunk. Now, a lot of people would say, if you do something like this, stop working on cars. No, don't stop working on cars. Just do better. Just learn from this and don't do this. Just do a little better next time. And I know dry eyes could work way better at removing this stuff, but I don't have any dry eyes and there's none available locally, so. We're gonna have to chisel it off. I'm gonna try and do it as nicely as possible because I don't wanna damage this surface. We got most of the sound deadening off from the center, but these outer portions are not cooperating. So I am gonna have to grind these off with the wire wheel. But that's okay because while I have the wire wheel out, I can start grinding the adhesive off of the seams here so I can expose those spot welds. And I also need to expose the spot welds that are along the frame rail area here. And that should really be it. Once we grind out the rest of the spot welds, we might be able to start pulling this thing off. We're getting close. We're almost there. Our surface has been prepped and I even went ahead and drilled all the pilot divots. Even on this side. I even went ahead and drilled some farther down the frame rails because I plan on lifting up the floorboard and separating it just a little bit from the frame rails. I don't want to separate it completely all the way back. I think that's a little unnecessary. But if you guys remember, I had to chop the frame rails off of the Gloria to get the damaged parts off. And I didn't want to chop these frame rails because I want to keep these intact and straight. So I think by separating the tray from the rails, I'll have just enough clearance to get it out of 
the rest of the chassis. But we'll see when we get that far. I'm just kind of thinking ahead at this point. These will hopefully be the last spot welds I'll be drilling out on the whole build, which is kind of crazy to think because it feels like it's never ending. I feel like there's always more to drill out. All the spot welds have been drilled out. Now we need to remove those 10 millimeter bolts. Earlier we discovered these 10 millimeter bolts actually just thread straight into the frame rail. I wonder if they did this in the factory to help set the panel down onto the frame rails and then tighten it in the correct spot. But either way, we gotta take them off and then we'll fight the seam sealer and start prying back the rest of the panel. I almost wanna tip this on its side to see if we have better access because I'm gonna need to get to the bottom of this panel to make sure that everything is broken free. Let's see if we can flip it over. Well, it's a good thing I did flip this thing over and check because I missed a couple spot welds on the frame rail And I'm not able to get to these with the drill because of the angle So I'm gonna have to go get the belt sander or actually I'm pretty sure it's called a band file Looks like we have this rear end free now if I yank it right here you see the whole thing flexing Oh I thought I was gonna have to drill out some more spot welds to free up the floor pan from the frame rails But it might actually come out I'm gonna use two hands for this. I don't want this to fall off and bend and make more work for myself. All right, there we go. There's our new rear end. Looks pretty good. Perfect. Now we gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with this. Does anyone need some Gloria scrap metal? Honestly, I did wanna keep these subframe studs, at least the frame rails for it, because this would be a great opportunity to convert a car to rear wheel drive. These are the most important guts to have. But the problem is I have nowhere to put it. I need my own shop, man. I've been saving up, I can't lie. Oh, before I forget, I need to take off these trunk hinges because if you guys remember, the trunk hinges that were on the Gloria are totally warped. And I'm also going to take a picture of how they are on the car so that I know how to install them when the time comes. Because sometimes these springs can be a little bit confusing. These straight rods are the springs. I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to take off these springs, but by the looks of it, this side looks like it's hooked in and this side has this rounded edge to it, which makes me think that I should take this side off first. And there's a little groove here for this one to slide out. So do I just... Oh man, this is scary. <laughs> <laughs> on second thought, we can just take off the four 10 millimeter bolts on each side. I think that's a lot safer than getting whacked with a spring. What the heck, they're still attached? Oh, I guess it hooks into the chassis, not just the hinge. Alright, we got them out. That was a lot of fun. Now that we have all the parts that we need off of this chassis half cut, the next step is going to be prepping the metal to be welded onto the chassis or even just before a test fit. Because trying to test fit panels together with seam sealer and glue in the way is just not a good time. And we want our test fit to be accurate so that we know it's gonna fit perfectly when it's time to weld in. So now I need to get the wire wheel and grind off all of this pookie. But I'll probably move this closer to the garage. This is bringing back memories of dragging my 240 half cut around the yard. If you guys remember, I had to drag that thing so many times. Hopefully this is the only time we're dragging this one. I've been looking forward to laying out all these parts and pieces for quite some time now. So I've kind of put the smash stuff up here. And these are the parts that we were going to be using to fix the Gloria. It's pretty satisfying to see it all laid out like this before it actually goes on the car. Now the only piece that I'm really missing right now is the driver's side quarter panel. But as we stated earlier, this little section is going to get us to where we need to be for now. Luckily the trunk, bumper, and other quarter panel are mint, and most importantly, the rear frame rails and floor pan. This was really fun taking apart. I find this really exciting to see how cars are put together, and then to be able to put them back together in better condition 
It's just so satisfying. I'm glad that I have the opportunity that I do to be able to film and edit this stuff together for you guys to watch and enjoy. And my main goal for doing all of this is to motivate other people on their project cars or whatever you're going through in life. Just take it one step at a time. Keep your goal in mind. Stay at it. Even when you think it's impossible or you think it's going to be too hard or you're feeling too tired, just stick with it, man. For example, today I'm just so sore. I've been skating a lot more and my back was killing me. My arms and my legs, I'm just sore all over. But I was like, no, we need to push through. We need to get this trunk pan off because that was the goal that I set this morning when I woke up. I was like, I want this trunk pan off of the parts car. And we got it done. I didn't grind it yet because that's a whole nother process. It's gonna take so much time and the sun is gonna set in 20 minutes. But I just wanna get this laid out. I apologize if these recent Gloria videos are a bit short. They take a lot more work than they fill up content, if that makes sense. So basically it's like three days worth of work is 20 minutes-ish of video. And sometimes it's not even that. But I'm trying my best and that's all I can do. Now, a lot of you guys were saying that this was an HOA and that's why the complaint and the order was put in place. But no, it's actually just Will County in general. Will County is the next county from Cook County. Cook County is Chicago. So basically all of the Western Chicago suburbs have the same law, which is why we're having to rush the Gloria project because you're only allowed to have like four cars on the driveway. And there's already four back here. And there's probably four or five up front. Omar did just recently put up this fence here in an attempt to get some more privacy. And there's also another fence going along the whole front of his house. But what are you gonna do? Now that someone called, people have to come and check, make sure he's actually making progress. It's kind of annoying, but it is what it is. We're working with what we got. Eventually, we'll have our own shop. Do that, Ryan. I have recently received new carpet for the 300ZX, and I've also had these black seats for a while. Shout out to Caden for those. You're probably wondering, well, don't you already have carpet in there? Yes, I do. But it's a little crusty, it's floppy, and that wasn't my main concern. My main concern is I cannot get rid of the dead mouse smell. If you guys remember, most of the black interior in this car I found in the junkyard. I pressure washed it, scrubbed it, disinfected it. Honestly, like right around this area is where it's the worst. And as soon as the heat turns on in the car and starts blowing all of that around, my allergies kick in and I cannot stop sneezing. It's probably really bad for your health to be breathing that in. So we're gonna start taking care of that today. This carpet came out of a parts car. It's not in the worst condition. It's not in the best condition but it doesn't smell like dead mice. So that was my main concern. We are gonna have to pressure wash this and scrub obviously because it is a little crusty. It's got some rust in it, but it's also uncut and everything is intact, which I'm also very thrilled about. First, a quick vacuum. <laughs> Check out this tip. You basically use a buffer or something that vibrates and put it on the carpet while you're vacuuming and it'll bounce up all the debris from beneath. Crazy. I always delete the cushion stuff that they put on the bottom of this carpet just because I know it holds a lot of nastiness. Now I've left the carpet upside down and then used the buffer this way. I also put tires underneath it and check out how much dust came off. You can see the outline on the ground. That is so crazy. Next, let's hose this thing down. Basically get a nice little pre-rinse on it. And then we're gonna get the Dawn dish soap and a scrubber. And scrub all the stuff out of here, all the gunk. And then a pressure washer. Oh, that's pretty gross. It's like off-white. Get all that out of there. Well, I guess we let the sun do its job and dry this up. It's drip drying right now. It'll probably take all day to dry up, let's be honest. Recently, I bought some new wheels for the Integra, but I messed up. I saw five lug and I saw 16 by eight, 16 by seven and a half. And I was like, buy, but they're five by a hundred. TE 37s, OG bronze, stamped 1998. So if you are five by a hundred and are interested in these wheels, let me know. I'm not gonna try and make money off you. I'll just sell them to you for what I paid for them. It was around 
13, 1400, I'll have to double check. So let me know, no cracks, no bends, they look pretty sick. Definitely a bucket list wheel. I thought I finally scored them, but five by 100. Always double check your lug patterns before buying wheels. But thank you guys so much for sticking around. Don't forget to drop a like on the video if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.